Hi everyone, my name is Peter Klaas and today I would like to show you an example on how to make goal objects for particles in Houdini. I will be using a bit of SOPs, POPs and VOP POPs. So let's get started. So first of all, create a new geometry object and dive inside. And you can just get rid of the file. So then, we need a base object, so that will just be a sphere in this case. Right? Change the primitive time to polygon. Right? And let's increase the frequency so we've got a little bit more points to work with. So if I turn on the points and I'm going to switch to flat wire shaded, I have a better idea of how many, you know, how many points I'm working with. So this will be the base object and say that another object can be the target, the goal object. So this would be a grid in this case. Now I do want to have to make sure rather that the grid points match the points of the sphere. So in this case the sphere point the sphere has got 92 points and the grid has got 100 points so they don't match up. We're gonna have to make them match up. But let's analyze our base object a little bit and work with that first. What I want to do, right, if I turn on my normals, what I want to do is prepare my base object so that it is ready to start emitting particles. So I want to give it some normals that will come into account when we use um, the normals as the initial velocity for the particles when they are being born, when they are being emitted. So the way to go about doing that is right mouse button, uh, click and attach a facet to it. Let's pre-compute the normals in there. And if I turn the visibility on, you can see the normals have been created. Another thing that I want to do is I want to put all the points that I want to use for my goal into a group. So I'm going to add a new group to this. Right? And I'm going to call this group base GRP base group. And let's call this one $OS. This will basically reference the name of the operator as such. And just make sure that your group type is set to points so that we've got points over there. So at the moment we can see there are 92 points in this base group. So that's good. Um, what I want to do is I want to append a scatter to my grid and make sure that the amount of points scattered onto the grid are the same, is the same. So in this case, if I just take a quick look at the grid, there's 100 points. The scatter at the moment is set to 5000, which is way too much, so I'm going to set this to 92, the same number as points in base group. But I'm going to automate this obviously with an expression. And as you can see over there, there are now 92 points scattered all over the grid. Right? Now we're going to optimize this a little bit better so that even if the grid is moving, the points don't start jumping about. But let's build in this expression first. The expression that I want to use is point list. Point list will basically return um, a list of arguments, a list of uh, points. The first argument as you can see as a string is the path to a point sop and the one that I'm going to use is base group, base GRP. The second argument is the group itself. So basically this will return all the points that are inside of whatever the group is of this sop. So the ones that I want are the ones inside of base group. Now at the moment this returns a string, right, sort of a space separated string of points and I want to really start counting all those points. So I'm going to surround this with arc C. Right? And if I surround this with arc C, then you can see that this number is now 92. So you have to imagine this as one long string, this point list, one long string of like say point 0.0, space, point 0.1, space, point 0.2, space, point 0.3, and so on, all the way till 92. What arc C do does is it will count all the arguments, so it will sort of return, you know, 92, the total number of points, the total number of arguments. Okay, so let's carry on. Um, one of the things I want to do now is sort of deform this a little bit over time so that we can have a better idea. So if I insert a mountain to this, so you can already see that the points now have been scattered over the mountain. So I'm going to increase this a little bit so the height can become something like 3 and I'm going to give it a slight offset. So. I'm just going to use $t in there. So that's time times 0 0.1. And that will basically give me this kind of slow-moving, mountainy 
you know, landscape that sort of, you know, has an offset on it. Problem is, however, if I look at the scatter, these points are now sort of, you know, like, you know, jittering all over the place. And if we would use this as a target, as a goal object, it, you know, it will the the points will jump as well, and so the goals will go crazy, the particles. So in order to get around that, what we can do is we can measure the surface area with a measure, with a measure so as such, and connect it to the original grid, right? So basically all the surface areas of the primitives will be measured. We have to change this from parameter to area. And what I'm going to do then is transfer this, this attribute onto this sort of chain. So I'm going to use an attribute transfer. from there to there. So what's going on? This is the source and this is the sort of this is where um, this is where the new attribute will be applied to. Now what I can do then is if I middle mouse button on this I'm hoping that you can just see it. There is a new primitive attribute which is called area. Yeah? We can use this primitive attribute inside of our scatter. Right? So if I make my scatter visible there is a specific flag which, which says scatter based on primitive area. So automatically it will try to you know calculate the area, but it calculates it every single time. So y when the when the geometry is updating, it will update the area. So what instead we want to do is use an alternate attribute, use the area that is associated with the still grid, right? So let's type in area. Now as we play playback the points are not jittering about anymore and they just stay stuck to where they you know to what you would expect in a way so before I'm going to move into pops one of the things that I want to do is attach some nulls nulls are good points to to reference from later on so I'm going to call this first null I'm going to call this base so this null will be used um, as the input for the base object and this null will be used for the target or for the goal, let's call it goal alright, now I'm going to lay down a pop network and I'm going to connect the first into the first context into the first input I'm going to connect the null base this will be the object where the particles will be emitted from um, just to make sure that they are associated, the second s chain is associated with it, I'm going to input it into the second one. I'm not actually going to use this as a collision object or anything else, but um, you will see soon enough. So I'm going to lay down a source to birth my particles from. And first of all, I need to change my geometry source to first context. So now it is using the sphere. right? Second context would be using the grid, which is not visible but you know it's there um, because basically it's uh, just scattered points so it's set to use first context geometry second the impulse activation I basically want to emit the total number of points so 92 points yeah, at frame 1 and only at frame 1 so I'm just going to put in a quick expression $FF is equal to 1 so only at frame 1 will this evaluate to true and then it will basically emit a certain amount of par particles. I'm going to turn off the constant activation so that the constant birth rate is not valid. At the moment zero particles are being born, right? So at frame one zero particles are being born. I'm going to say dollar NPT which stands for number number of points of the um, the source object. So at the moment because I am at frame one this is true and 92 particles have been born if I go to frame 2 this becomes false and 92 particles well this is this remains correct this remains true but it is really you know it's not emitting any more particles on top of that note that my particles will be emitted you know outwards so as such because I've ge I've given them normals and these normals are basically being inherited in their in their uh, velocity so if I didn't want that then I could just say set initial velocity and set it there the variance um, to zero as well. The velocity at this point is directional velocity and this is a random velocity so now they're going into a random direction. If I turn this off as such they're not moving at all anymore 
and that's basically what we want. This is our starting position. All right. So one one of the things that I'm going to do quickly uh, before we move on next is bring up a quick um, whiteboard to show a bit of the vector maths behind it.